Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, in today's class we are going to continue the chapter chemical reactions and equations and even we will finish up this chapter. And you all know that in yesterday's class we were answering for the questions that are given in exercise. I think total 13 were over. Now let's go for answering remaining questions. I'll write 14th one now. Yes, please go through. Question number 14. It is in the refining of silver, the recovery of silver from silver nitrate solution involved displacement by copper metal. Write down the reaction involved. They only have given. See. Refining of silver. What is the meaning of this? Refining is nothing but purification. So purification of silver. So to purify that, then we will go for displacement reaction of silver nitrate solution with copper. Let us go for writing the reaction in what? Here I write. Silver nitrate. What is the chemical formula of silver nitrate? It is AG NO3, right? Here I am right. AG NO3, silver nitrate plus copper. And we all know that silver nitrate solution, it is prepared by using water, therefore it is aqueous. Then copper, it is, it is a metal which is in solid state. The reaction between these two, look here. We, we have already learned in series uh, in the reactivity series that silver is less reactive than copper or copper is more reactive than silver. Hence, copper displaces silver from silver nitrate solution. Is it not? Then we get CuNO3 plus Ag. Check that whether it is right. This is aqueous and this is soft. So this is the reaction in one. Did you understand? And check that whether equation is balanced. Silver, one atom. Here, one atom. Nitrogen, one, one. Oxygen, three, three. And copper, one and one. It is balanced. So let's move on to 15th one. Please go for copying this. Go to 15th one. The question is like this. What do you mean by precipitate reaction explain by giving examples we are very familiar with this subchemical reaction first once you recall the definition of precipitate we know that precipitate is a solid solid chemical substance which is insoluble in the solution and it is formed during the chemical reaction and this precipitate is formed under two conditions what are those yes first one is the reaction between two aqueous solutions right and second one is the reaction between an aqueous solution and a gas that is when a gas is passed into the aqueous solution then precipitate is formed and the reaction in which precipitate is formed is called precipitate reaction but what is the actual definition actual definition is the chemical reaction in which two or more aqueous solutions react with each other or a gas is passed into, into the aqueous solution to form an insoluble chemical sol, solid chemical substance is formed. This is known as precipitate reaction. And even we can go for giving many examples. Now, first, I'll write the definition of precipitate reaction. Please go through the definition. See that the chemical reaction in which two aqueous solutions react with each other. Or a gas is passed into the aqueous solution to form a solid substance which is insoluble in the solution is called precipitate reaction. Clear? Yeah. Let's go for taking an example. First one. Let us go for taking two aqueous solutions. You may choose that. When, when the aqueous solutions of aqueous solutions of one is lead nitrate aqueous solution of lead nitrate 
and potassium iodide potassium iodide react each other then what is formed then the precipitate the precipitate lead oxide is formed sorry lead iodide is formed lead iodide is formed with potassium nitrate potassium nitrate observe this i'll write the chemical equation aqueous solution of lead nitrate it is pb no3 twice it is aqueous plus potassium iodide ki this is also aqueous these two react with each other to form the precipitate that is lead iodide pb i2 what is the color of this lead iodide yes you are right it is yellow precipitate plus potassium nitrate kno3 this is also aqueous clear so you have to balance yourself i am go for taking another example see that the chemical reaction in which two aqueous solution react with each other and a gas is passed into the aqueous solution which one let us go for taking carbon dioxide what happens when carbon dioxide is passed into the calcium hydroxide yes it produces the white precipitate called calcium carbonate right here i am going to write that when carbon dioxide carbon dioxide gas is gas is passed into into the solution of the solution of calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide then a white precipitate of white precipitate of which one calcium carbonate what is the other name of calcium carbonate common name it is limestone calcium carbonate is formed calcium carbonate is formed with water is it not i'll write the chemical equation when carbon dioxide gas is passed into aqueous solution of calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide ca oh twice plus carbon dioxide co2 gives rise to it is ca co3 plus h2 even it should be balanced by yourself hope that you have understood now please go for copy yes please go through sixteen so one it is explain the following terms of gain or loss of oxygen with two examples each for first one oxidation oxidation second one is reduction yes students we have already learnt about both what is oxidation we define this as the addition of oxygen to a substance or the removal of hydrogen from a substance is called oxidation whereas reduction addition of hydrogen to a substance or removal of oxygen from a substance is called reduction right but here you are going to explain the explain these in terms of gain of oxygen or loss of oxygen then what do you say about the first one that is oxidation we know that oxidation is the gain of oxygen gain of oxygen then i'll give you the two example later what about the reduction reduction is it is addition of hydrogen or removal of oxygen in terms of oxygen it is loss of oxygen 
from a substance in a reaction. So, reduction is loss of oxygen from a substance from a substance in a chemical reaction. Similarly, here also. Oxidation is the gain of oxygen gain of oxygen in a chemical reaction. In a chemical reaction. So, now let us go for taking examples one by one for each. First one, oxidation. Dear students, we are very familiar with the chemical reaction that what happens when copper is heated? When it is heated strongly, then it reacts with oxygen. Right? Then produces a black color residue that is called copper oxide, CuO. Then balance it, it is 2 and this will be 2. Here observe that copper has, has gained oxygen and has become copper oxide. So here we can write, here copper is oxidized oxidized to copper oxide means it has obtained oxygen similarly I'll go for taking one more example I'll take one more example that is carbon dioxide reacts with hydrogen could you tell what happens yes you are right carbon monoxide is produced plus water Right. Observe it. Here, hydrogen, it removes oxygen. Right. And oxygen is added to hydrogen and it becomes water. So, here, addition of oxygen. Addition of oxygen. Clear? What is this? Oxidation. For your reference, I am writing. Here hydrogen is oxidized to water means it has gained the oxygen. Here, here hydrogen is oxidized to water. It's to understood. Yes. Now let me go for second one. Go through that reduction. What is reduction? It is the loss of oxygen from a substance in a chemical reaction removal of oxygen I'll go for taking another simple example for this one for first, first one copper oxide what is the color of the copper oxide it is black what happens when it is heated with hydrogen again it undergoes a reverse reaction it will turn brown that is Cu plus water clear up then what do you say here copper oxide has lost oxygen and it is reduced to what copper clear up it is loss of loss of oxygen what is loss of oxygen it is reduction clear up here I'll write here it is copper oxide is reduced to copper. Similarly, I'll go for taking another example. Same thing. Carbon dioxide reacts with hydrogen to form carbon monoxide and water. Here, is it an example for reduction? If so, how? Yes, did you get? You can come to know that here also it has lost oxygen atom. So, loss of oxygen, nothing but reduction. Hence, we can write carbon dioxide is reduced to carbon monoxide. Hope that you have understood. See, you have to balance yourself. Please go for copying from there to here. Go through 17th one. It is 
a shiny brown colored element x heating in a becomes black then name the element x and the black color compound formed dear students you know that the element having brown color what is that it is copper and it will be having the shiny appearance as well so when it is heated what happens it reacts with oxygen just I'll, first i'll write the chemical equation so that it is easy to uh, name that element see cu plus o2 gives rise to cu o what is the color of copper it is brown when does it react with oxygen yes when it is heated then it produces a compound what is the name of that compound copper oxide what is its color it is black right it is just for your reference only now you can go for balancing it let us go for answering the given question a shiny brown element x on heating in air becomes black in color name the element x what is that x x is copper right and black color compound here on right black colored compound yes name this it is copper oxide yes. let's move on to 18th one before that please go for copying from there to here this is not necessary only for the sake of understanding i have written but they expect these two yes right go through 18th one why do we apply paint on iron particles what is the reason we know that iron get rusted when it is exposed to the atmosphere but by applying the paint how do you protect the iron from rusting nothing but corrosion yes we know that paint it acts as an antioxidant right and it avoids the contact of contact of uh, air and water vapors with the iron so that it protects from rusting clear up so here i'll write the answer it is paint paint acts as an antioxidant oxidant then it avoids the contact of contact of air and water vapors or oxygen and water vapor with iron and protects it protects iron from rusting or corrosion got it why do we apply paint on iron articles only to protect the iron articles from rusting how if you if they ask so you can write this paint acts as an antioxidant and it avoids the contact of oxygen and water vapors with iron clear up yes copy this i'll move on to 19th one i'm sorry oil and fat containing food items are flushed with nitrogen why we know that when the food containing oil and fat when they are exposed to the atmosphere they react with oxygen and they produce the unpleasant smell and the food get spoiled which is we condition we call this condition as rancidity so by using the nitrogen we can keep the food item fresh one thing and second one is we can protect the food item from rancidity clear up so we can write the answer like this because because first one is to keep 
food items food item uh, food item containing fat and oil fresh food item fresh then to protect the protect the food from the development of from the development of rancidity rancidity clear up yes go for copy this go through this 2020 this is the last question in that exercise okay. explain the following terms with one example each first one corrosion and second one rancidity we have already discussed about both of them corrosion that is when the metals are exposed to the atmosphere what happens they may react with oxygen water moisture and they may react with some of the chemicals as a result of it they lose their mass by developing some colored patches on those metal on the surface of the metals is it not and this is what we say corrosion and we actually define this as the eating up of metals by the action of uh, by the action action with air moisture water and chemicals this is known as corrosion example corrosion of iron corrosion of uh, copper corrosion of silver right corrosion of iron it is when iron metal reacts with oxygen and water then it produces the compound called rust the rust is the chemical name of rust is hydrated iron oxide similarly and another one is when copper when it is unused for a longer time it slowly reacts with the moisture that is oxygen carbon dioxide and water and produces the a green colored material which is the combination of copper carbonate and copper hydroxide understood yes similarly then when uh, uh, when silver when it reacts with the sulfur dioxide present in the atmosphere what happens uh, a black color residue a black color patches can be seen on the silver metal which is called silver sulfide clear up so these are the some of the examples similarly rancidity what is rancidity here we have already learned that when food can food item containing fat and oil when they are kept open what happens they react with them. oxygen and the food get spoiled it loses its taste and it produces the unpleasant smell and we call this condition as rancidity and we know that uh, to avoid the food items or to keep the food item fresh we can go for following some of the uh, methods that is by storing the food item containing the fat and oil in the airtight container by storing them in the refrigerator by packing them with a nitrogen gas is it not these are the different ways and even by adding antioxidants also we can protect the food item from the development of rancidity then what are those antioxidants examples they are one is bha and another one is bht what is bha butylated hydroxy anisole and bh T butylated hydroxy toluene oxidants they are the substance thus they are the substances which protect the food from rancidity clear up so now I'll go for writing both of them dear students I have written the information about both corrosion and rancidity please go for copying here I have written the definition with example and here definition with a prevention of food from rancidity even uh, when I was covering the concepts also, I had given the detailed information. Just uh, you to go for copying this. With this, the chapter has been completed. Now, just we will move on to two, three to four questions, additional questions from the NCRT example and previous year question paper. Just go for copying this first. Observe some of the additional questions. In that first one is very important, both are very important. Go through this one. 
First one is give the characteristic test for the following gases. We are very familiar with all the these four gases: carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, oxygen, and hydrogen. Carbon dioxide. How do you test whether a carbon dioxide gas is released? See, if the released gas is carbon dioxide, when it is passed into the calcium hydroxide solution, what happens? It turns to milky. That is, a white precipitate of calcium carbonate is formed. Is it not? Next, similarly, sulfur dioxide. What happens if the sulfur dioxide fumes are coming out? Then, when you inhale the smell of that, you ex you will experience that it is a smell of rotten egg. Clear? Huh? Then, oxygen. Here, when you bring a lighted matchstick near the mouth of the test tube in which a gas is there, if the matchstick burns brightly, then we can say that it is oxygen. Next, hydrogen. when you bring a burning matchstick <coughs> near the mouth of the test tube if the flame goes off with a pop sound then we can say that it is hydrogen gas clear up yes i'll go for writing the characteristics dear students i think you might have copied this question please go on writing the answer with me first one carbon dioxide yes what do you write when carbon dioxide gas is passed passed through yes passed through calcium hydroxide solution what happens then it turns it turns milky this is the characteristic test for carbon dioxide b sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide smells like what it smells like rotten egg rotten egg but ana right see one with me oxygen how do you test when burning matchstick when burning matchstick is brought what near the oxygen then it burns burns even brighter because as it gets excess amount of oxygen then d hydrogen here also hope that you have copied right with me when burning matchstick burning matchstick is brought brought near the test tube near the mouth of the test tube containing hydrogen near the mouth of the test tube test tube containing containing hydrogen gas what happens it burns with pop sound pop sound you know hope that you have copied then you stop and observe this second question let's go for answering first we will move on to the given question on heating blue colored powder of copper nitrate in a boiling tube copper oxide which is black in color oxygen gas and brown gas x is formed write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction identify the brown gas x avoid identify the type of reaction then d1 what could be the ph range of aqueous solution of the gas x actually a ph range concept will come in the chapter called acids bases and salts but here just i'll give you the information in brief yes first you copy the question then you should go on writing the answer with me yes hope that you have copied 
Now, start writing the answer with me. Please go through the given statement. On heating blue color powder of copper nitrate. What is the color of the copper, nit copper nitrate? It is blue color. Chemical formula? It is Cu NO3 twice. Right? Copper nitrate in boiling tube. So it should be heated. What happens? Copper oxide, which is black in color, is formed. Copper oxide. Chemical formula CuO plus oxygen gas O2 and a brown color gas X is formed. Yeah, this is the chemical equation with respect to this. Now, write the balanced chemical equation of the reaction. Identify the brown gas X evolved. First, let us go for answering V1. What is X? Here, look here. Copper nitrate. It undergoes decomposition on heating. Produces copper oxide, oxygen and nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide, it is brown in color. Brown fumes will be coming out. They are nothing but nitrogen dioxide. Here, X is, X is nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. NO2. Now, I will write the chemical equation. Then we shall go for balancing it. Cu NO3 twice. On heating, we get CuO plus O2 plus NO2. Now, you just observe. Here, copper, one atom, one atom. Nitrogen, two. Here, one. But you can observe that oxygen, two, three is a six, but it has been distributed here. Here, here, here. How do you go for balancing? You go for taking nitrogen. Nitrogen is how much? It is two. Then can we write here two? If you write two here, oxygen will be four, four plus two, six, six plus one, seven. But it does not get balanced. Then how do you balance it? Yes, let's go for that. Observe. 2. Does it come? No. Hence, just we shall go for writing it as 4. 4 atoms of nitrogen. But here, 2 are there. Hence, here I will write 2. Now, you just count it. 4 atoms of nitrogen. 2, 2 is a 4. 4 atoms of nitrogen. Oxygen. 2, 2 is a 4. 4, 3 is a 12. But here, 2, 4 is a 8. 8 plus 2, 10. But here is 1. And number of atoms of copper, 2. Here let us write 2. See that now. 2 atoms of copper. Then 2, 2 is a 4. 4, 3 is a 12. 12 atoms of oxygen. Here. 2 plus 2 plus 8. It is 12. Did you understand? And now we will move on to C. Observe. Identify the type of reaction. What type of reaction? Here you can notice that in the reactant side there is only one compound. On heating, it gets split up into three other compounds. Hence, what do you call the chemi chemical reaction in which a substance split up into two or more new substances? It is called decomposition reaction, right? It is a decomposition reaction. And you can also notice that this decomposition reaction is carried out by providing heat then what it is also called it is also called thermal decomposition thermal decomposition next B what could be the pH range of aqueous solution of the gas X what is the gas X it is just we have come to know that this is Nitrogen dioxide, right? NO2. There we have written nitrogen dioxide, which is brown in color. pH range. We know that when this nitrogen dioxide reacts with water and forms a compound called nitric oxide. 
which are learnt in the concept called acid rain, right? When the fuels like petrol and diesel are burned, what happens? They release oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, and they, and these will react with water vapors present in the atmosphere, and they produce sulfurous acid and nitric acid. Here, nitrogen dioxide reacts with water to form nitric acid. Dear students, here pH, pH range, it is nothing but power of hydrogen ion concentration will give us the information about whether the compound is acidic, basic or neutral. If it is acidic, how uh, strong acid or how weak acid it is, how if it is base, how strong base or how weak base it is, that can be known from the pH scale. And in that pH, the scale will, in that scale, number will be from 0 to 14. And these are to be divided into three categories. They are, one is less than 7, second one is equal to 7, third one is more than 7, that is up to 14. Clear up? Less than, if it is pH range is, or if the pH of the given compound is less than 7, it is acid. Then, if it is equal to 7, it is neutral, nothing but salt. Whereas, greater than 7, then we can call it as base. Here, nitrogen dioxide. We know, we know that non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. Now, you tell what, if, what will be the pH scale or pH range? It is from, sorry, it is less than 7. So, here I'll write pH scale or pH range is less than 7. Why it is less than 7? Because oxides of non metals are acidic in nature. Here I'll write for your reference. First, oxides of non metal, non metal are acidic in nature, which I had learnt in A standard. Do you remember the chapter? Materials, metals, and non metals. There, you had taken the sulfur powder, which is yellow in color, and it is to be heated in the deflagrating spoon. Then the white fumes will be coming out. These fumes are nothing but sulfur dioxide. And this sulfur dioxide gas is collected in the gas jar. Then after that, you will go for adding water to it. Then you will test it with the litmus paper. If it is blue, what happens? It turns red. If it is red, there will be no change. Hence, we can say that sulfur, it is a non-metal. Sulfur dioxide, it is non-metallic oxide. And turning of blue to red, the litmus, it indicates acidic. Hence, we can say that non-metallic oxides are acidic in nature. Era, yes, please go for copying from there to here. Yes, dear students, the chapter has been completed. Just once we shall go for revising the concepts that are in the chapter, chemical reactions and equation. Revision. Revision of the concepts. First one. What is first one? Chemical reaction. What is chemical reaction? Yes, it is. The chemical process in which the substances undergo chemical change to form new substances with new properties. And even we have taken plenty of examples as well. Next, to identify whether a chemical reaction has taken place or not, and we will make some of the observations and these are called these observations are called characteristics of chemical reaction then what are these yes one is change in color right the second one is change in physical state then third one it is formation of precipitate formation of precipitate then fourth one is evolution of gas yes, these are the observation that we make and with respect to all these we have already taken the examples as well 
in the examination they may give you some of the chemical reactions and they will ask you to identify the characteristics of chemical reaction even one more it is uh, evolution of gas and change in temperature as well change in temperature just one example what are, uh, we know that when zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid it produces zinc chloride with the liberation of hydrogen gas then could you tell the characteristics of chemical chemical reaction in this yes, one is evolution of gas and second one is change in temperature that is when you test the bottom of the beaker or else the test tube then you feel warm like that many are taken next after that we come across chemical equation right what is chemical equation hmm? it is the symbolic representation of the chemical reaction in which the different signs are used and also the chemical formula of reactants and products are written and in that word equation is there that is the shortened form of chemical reaction and in chemical equation there are two types what are those one is balanced chemical equation second one is unbalanced chemical equation what do you call the balanced chemical equation the chemical equation in which the number of atoms of each element on the reactant side is equal to the product side nothing but the mass of the reactants is equal to mass of the products that is nothing but balanced chemical equation we also know that it satisfies the law of conservation of mass next unbalanced the chemical equation in which the number of atoms of each element on the reactant side is not equal to product side which means mass of the reactants is not equal to mass of the products and it doesn't satisfy the law of conservation of mass <coughs> then after that we learned how to balance the chemical equation by which method yes you are right it is it is hit and trial method balancing balancing the chemical equation by hit and trial method you also know that what are the steps to be followed while balancing the chemical equation by hit and trial method first you will write the chemical reaction in shortened form as word equation then after that symbolic equation then you will go for listing the number of atoms of each element on the reactants and product side then you will go for choosing the compound having maximum number of atoms then after that you will go for choosing an element having maximum number of atoms from there you will just go for balancing by multiplying with a suitable number right but here we are not going to division addition or subtraction only multiplication will be followed next after all this after balancing a chemical equation we learned how to make it as more informative making making a chemical equation chemical equation more informative how do you go for that yes one is by indicating the physical state physical state then physical state that means for solid we write yes liquid l gas g if the solution is prepared by using water it is called aqueous we write a q right then after that by indicating the reaction condition we also know that there are chemical reaction which takes place under some conditions only like when it is heated in the presence of sunlight by passing electricity like this these are and in the presence of catalyst at particular temperature at particular uh, pressure the chemical reaction take place those are to be mentioned on the above the aroma or below the aroma then after that by indicating heat changes that means there are chemical reaction in which heat is absorbed so then uh, heat that uh, heat produce uh, 
heat absorbed is to be written on the reactant side. If the heat is produced, then that should be written on the right hand side. That is on the product side. This is how we can make a chemical equation more informative. And after that, even we will also go for using some of the symbols. What are those? Just we have already written. They are S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, AQ for aqueous. Not only this, we will go for using the symbol plus, which, in, which indicates the reactants are separated and the products that are formed, they are separated. Next, then aroma, it indicates the direction of chemical reaction taking place. Next, if it is upward aroma, it indicates gas is released. If it is downward aroma, then we can say that a precipitate is formed. Next, after all these, we have come to know about the different types of chemical reactions. Different types of chemical reactions. They are mainly classified into five types. What are those? Yes, first one is combination reaction. What is combination reaction? The chemical equation, the chemical reaction in which two or more substances, chemical substances, combine chemically to form single product. Right? It is combination reaction. Next one is decomposition reaction. Yes, decomposition reaction. It is the chemical reaction in which a single substance gets split up into two or more substances is called decomposition reaction and this decomposition reaction is carried out by using the different forms of energy. What are those? One is heat energy, second one is light energy and third one is Heat energy, light energy and electrical energy. Then what do you call the decomposition reaction which is carried out by supplying the heat? It is called thermal decomposition. Next, if the de decomposition reaction is carried out in the presence of sunlight, it is called photolysis or photochemical reaction. If the decomposition reaction is carried out by passing electricity, it is called electrolysis. Right? Next. After this, we have also come to know uh, the third one that is displacement reaction. What is displacement reaction? One is the chemical reaction in which an element present in the compound is displaced by Another element which is more reactive. Very simple. A more, rea more reactive element displaces the less reactive element from the solution. That is called displacement reaction. And fourth one is double displacement reaction. What it is? The chemical reaction in which two compounds mutually exchange their ions to form two new compounds is called double displacement reaction reaction. Fifth one is, it is redox reaction. Yes, define this. The chemical reaction in which oxidation and reduction reaction takes place simultaneously is called redox reaction. Then after all these chemical reactions, we came to know about some of the important activities, experiments, then what are those? The first one, it is with respect to decomposition. Could you tell? One is decomposition of FeSO4, iron sulphate crystals. What is the color of iron sulphate? It is pale green. Then what happens when heat is given to it? Then it produces the compound called Fe2O3, ferric oxide. What is its color? Brown. 
then sulfur dioxide right then sulfur trioxide next second one another activity it is very important that is electrolysis of water electrolysis of water you are very familiar with that we have drawn the with the diagram i had explained about electrolysis of water when uh, electricity is passed through acidified water it get split up into hydrogen and oxygen and these will be collected in the test tube in different volumes right you have to learn that one. next one. third one is it is uh, silver bromide when silver bromide is exposed to the atmosphere what happens it reacts with so in the presence of sunlight it undergoes decomposition and get separated into silver and bromide then after all these all these activities and fourth one is it is regarding displacement reaction what is that copper sulfate solution and iron when iron ale is kept in the copper sulfate solution the sky blue color of iron copper sulfate turn to pale green which is iron sulfate and the brown coating will be present on the iron nail which is called copper is it not next after that fifth one is it is the reaction between sodium sulfate na2so4 plus bacl2 the aqueous solutions of these two react with each other and form a white precipitate of barium sulfate plus sodium chloride solution it is also example for double displacement reaction got it next one more activity sixth one it is copper powder what is the color of the copper powder it is brown what happens when it is heated it reacts with oxygen and produces the black color residue called copper oxide then what happens when hydrogen gas is passed over copper oxide yes then we get copper get separated then water vapors are formed these two are the examples for redox reaction re reduction and oxidation after these activities we came to know about the different sub types of chemical reaction sub types of chemical reactions what are these first one is the chemical reaction in which heat is evolved or heat is released along with the product it is called exothermic reaction exothermic then a chemical reaction in which heat is absorbed to form the products it is called endothermic chemical reaction right and the third one what is called the decomposition reaction which is carried out in by supplying heat thermal in the presence of sunlight photolysis and by passing electricity electrolysis apart from this another one is precipitate reaction what is that the chemical reaction in which two aqueous solutions react with each other or a gas is passed into the aqueous solution to form a solid chemical substance which is insoluble in the solution is called precipitate reaction and here we have used the word precipitate what is precipitate it is a solid chemical substance which is formed during the chemical reaction and is insoluble in the solution it is called precipitate and this precipitate is formed under two conditions what are those one is when two aqueous solutions react with each other and the second one is when gas is passed into aqueous solution next after this next fourth one is neutralization reaction neutralization what is that when acid reacts with a base to form it it, it forms the salt and water salt is a neutral compound got it and this reaction is known as neutralization the chemical reaction in which acid reacts with base to form salt and water 
is called neutralization reaction next fifth one is oxidation what is that the addition of oxygen to a substance or removal of hydrogen from from a substance in a chemical reaction is called oxidation reaction next sixth one is reduction reaction what it is the addition of hydrogen to a substance or removal of oxygen from a substance in a chemical reaction is called reduction reaction with this even we have come to know that the sub oxidizing agent oxidizing agent what is oxidizing agent the compound which gives oxygen or the chemical substance which gives oxygen for oxidation is called oxidizing agent what is the other name of oxidizing agent it is substance reduce please do remember next another one is reducing agent this is the substance which removes oxygen from the uh, substance from the compound is called reducing agent and this is called substance oxidized right then after this after all this next we have come to know about the two important common effects of what are these common effects of oxidation they are one is corrosion and second one is rancidity what is corrosion it is the eating up of metals by the action with air moisture water or some chemicals on their surface is called corrosion and example corrosion of corrosion of iron it is nothing but the rust what is the chemical formula of the rust rust is it is fe2o3 x h2o any number of water molecules may be present then and what is its color it is red brown in color right then similarly corrosion of copper what is its color it is it is green then and it is a mixture of two compounds what are those this is copper carbonate and copper hydroxide then third one is it is corrosion of silver what is its color is black and the compound name is it is silver sulfide next rancidity what is rancidity when the food containing fat and oil is exposed to the atmosphere or is kept open in the atmosphere then it reacts with oxygen after that it loses its taste and produces a bad smell that is unpleasant smell and we call this condition as rancidity then how to avoid the food items from the development of rancidity by storing the food item in the airtight container by storing the food item in the packet which is filled with the nitrogen by storing the food item in the refrigerator by adding antioxidants then what are antioxidants they are the substances which are added to the food item containing fats and oil so that it prevents the food item from the development of rancidity there are two important antioxidants what are those one is bhd and another one is bha next in addition with all this we have solved we have answered for many questions in those it may be the balancing the chemical equations you must practice them and some of the reasoning questions in that most important that is white washing what is that we know that when calcium hydroxide is applied to the you are used for white washing and the wall get shiny appearance after 2 to 3 days of its application how we know that calcium hydroxide slowly react with the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere and produces a shiny chemical substance called calcium carbonate a thin layer of cal 
calcium carbonate is formed on the surface and this is why wall get a shiny appearance after the white washing clear up likewise similarly some other reasoning questions are there please do practice them dear students with this the chapter chemical reactions and equations completed please practice as good as possible and tomorrow we are going to conduct the monthly test and the syllabus from science the complete chapter chemical reactions and equations and mathematics polynomials and second one and another one is pair of linear equations in two variables up to where we have completed okay yes please get ready so with this let us stop the class thank you very much